in our last video of this series, we have learned about um, what is object oriented programming in Python. Uh, we have learned that why Python is known as object oriented programming. So, we have learned the basic uh, OOPS concept in Python like what are uh, objects, what are classes, how we can make the methods, how we can call them, right. So, we have seen almost all the concepts, basic concepts of object oriented programming in terms of Python with the help of example, fine. So, in this video, we are going to learn more about OOPS concept that is mostly we will learn it in the form of inheritance. That what is inheritance in Python? Um, inheritance in simple words, if I tell you about inheritance, what happens? That there will be one super class and there will be one subclass that will inherit the above class. Fine. So, it can inherit or it can use it, uh, the another class function, objects. Uh, variables right so we will see with the help of example that how to do that how to implement inheritance in python in detail so before starting the video if you are new to this series if you have if you are watching this video for the first time from this series then let me tell you that we have started the python series basically for beginners we have started from very basic concepts and we are going towards the advanced concepts i have given the link in the description you can go and check out our previous video so that you can get a complete idea so now let's start today's video so in today we are going to learn more about python inheritance so what do we mean by inheritance so in simple words we can say that inheritance allows us to define a class that inherits all the methods and properties from another class so, as I told, one will be your superclass and one will be your subclass. So, the subclass will be inheriting all the methods and properties from the superclass. Fine. So, you can call them as superclass and subclass. You can also call them as parent class and child class. So, the class from which you are going to inherit the methods and properties, it is known as the parent class. And the class that will inherit them, it is known as child class. Fine. Now, let's see with the help of example that how we can create parent class and child class. So, here you can see the example in front of you. So, let's say this is the basic example that um, shows you that what the superclass and subclass actually is. So, see what we have done here. First of all, we are having one class named person. We have seen how to declare the class and how to declare objects in our previous video also. So, here we have simply declared the class with the class name person. Then we have defined the init function. We know that what is init function? It will always be called whenever the class is initiated, right? So, uh, with the help of def keyword, we have written def. Then init function is there. And uh, we have passed three parameters. One is the self that we have already talked about. And f name and l name. That is first name and last name. Then inside the function, we are simply assigning the values as self dot first name equal to f name and self dot last name equal to l name fine now what we have done is this is one init function that is the inbuilt function of python and we have also created one user defined function see if you are not really clear about these things also that what are these functions what is init function what is user defined function what are the parameters about uh, please go and watch the previous video of this series that was all about oops concept so that you will get a clear idea in that video we have already discussed what is self what is in it everything so please go and visit that video first so that you will get a very clear idea regarding this video so what we have done this is the init function that is the default python function in this we have done only assignment of these variables and then we are having one user defined function that is print name so what we are doing in the print name simply we are defining the function print name with the parameter or argument self and inside that we are just printing that self dot first name and self dot last name so we are just uh, writing we are just printing these two we are just printing the, we just want to print first name and last name here fine okay now see this much we have already seen in our last video also we already know what these things are about now what happens that um, See, now, okay, first see simple example. So, this is the simple example where uh, I am now, I have done these two things and then what I am doing, we have seen, we have actually seen this whole 
example in our previous video but let's quickly see this once again and then we will add how to uh, create a child process how to create a child class in this only so that you can easily correlate so see first of all init function is there user defined function is there then what we have done we have made a object named x and we have made this object for the person class and we are passing two parameters that is john and do so this will be our basically our first name and last name and what i am doing with the help of this object i am calling my method or my function or this print name so what should happen this is calling this print name so ultimately this print should be executed and first name and last name should be printed so see yes our first name and last name are printed here after calling that function fine simple as that so this program is done you are clear with this we have already seen detailed explanation of this program now what we actually want to do in this uh, tutorial is this person is our super class or the parent class now we want to make a child class or the sub class for this super class that is person so how we can do that see again child class is nothing but it is also just like any other class so it can also be defined with the keyword class space and then you have to give the name of the subclass or the name of the child class so let's name it as student now i have made this uh, child class now what is the parent class so inside the parenthesis here like this i have to specify the parent class so in this case the parent class is what person so here i will write person fine and this is simply you can remember that this line is important so what this line is doing this is the syntax of how i can create the child class class keyword space the name of my child class and inside the parenthesis i am having the name of my uh, parent class or the super class fine so this is just the syntax of how to do that for example i i am just showing you this method and i don't want to do anything now whenever inside any loop or inside any condition or inside any class if we don't want to do anything we can simply write pass right i have uh, told you in detail about this pass keyword also so when we don't want to do anything we are simply writing pass so let's run it it won't make any difference now mm. okay yes whenever we are creating any class we have to write colon so currently it won't make any difference see simple my previous uh, my previous output is still there because in this new class we have we have just created one child class but we have not actually done anything inside that we have just written pass okay now let's see uh, let's say we want to do something here fine let's say i don't want to print these things here here i am printing uh, i am here i have assigned the values i have i have created one object and with the help of that object i am calling this print name now for example i want to do the same thing with the help of this student class so how to do that so let's say i don't want to do it here i don't want to print it there now i want to print that with the help of student class so how i can print it inside the student class let's say here i will write let's say here i will write now here i will make any object x and this object will be the object of my child class that is student class right and here again i can pass the parameters of first name and last name for example i am passing parinita hajra as the first name and last name and simply now i can call my function print see here print name is already there so i can call this print name with the help of this x so earlier what i have done here earlier earlier i have made an an object of the parent class that is an object of person and with the help of that object i was able to call this function right but now what i am doing is that i have made a child class and inside the child class i have made an object of the child class that is student and with the help of this object of the child class fine see understand this thing that now what we are doing with the help of the object of this child class now i am able to call 
the function of the parent class so this is the privilege that we are getting with the help of child class so what is the privilege that though this function is actually not present inside this child class it is present in the parent class but still we are able to call it access it and do whatever we want to do so after calling it like this also i can print my function i can print this here again this print name is called and inside this we are having print self dot first name for my self dot last name so my new first name and last name that i have passed with the help of the object of the student class is passed there and i am getting that as my output fine so this is basically the way that we are using our child class so this is basically inheritance that what we have done that this child class student has inherited the function print name from the parent class uh, person got it so the student class that is our child class it is inheriting the function print name from the parent class named person simple as that got it so this is basically what is inheritance actually in many interviews also they are asking you what is inheritance so you can say them example and you can give any such simple example to explain that yes you know about inheritance and how you can do inheritance with the help of python code fine so this is this is actually very important now what are some of the other things that i wanted to say you is see um here for the student class i am not having any need function so what happens that whenever this student class is called or whenever we are making the object of this student class so what will happen it will call uh, it will automatically call the init function of the parent class because it is not having any init function of its own right so this is one point to remember because we know that what is init function so always init function is what it is the function it is the inbuilt function of python which will always be called whenever the class is initiated fine so uh, here the student class is not having any init function of its own so what it will do it will by default use the init function of its parent class that is person but in case if you don't want the student class to use this init function but you want the student class to have the init function of its own so what you can do that instead of this pass you can have init function here also so if you want init function specifically for the student class you can define it here by using the same definition that is div then space underscore underscore in it underscore underscore and then side let's again pass three parameters same three parameters that is self name then first name and then last name fine so you can do it like this also okay uh, fine so you can have init function of its own now for example you are having init function inside student itself also but still if you want to call the init function of the parent fine you are having it here but still if you want to call the init function of the person class you can still do that how you can do that by using the class name person so you are writing the class name person and then dot after writing dot you can call its initial function how with the help of this fine and then we are passing self first name and last name so what i have done here i have i have written the init function individually for the student class also fine now whenever i am writing init function inside the student class specifically so this init function of its own will be called but if even if after having init function here if you want to call the init function of the person class of the super class or of the parent class you can still do that how by writing it with the parent class name so parent class dot then in it function you can call the parent what this line will do this line will actually call the in it function of the parent class that is person fine simple so like this also you can do and then you can print the same thing here it will be printed without any problem you can see for in the hadra is being printed so got it so these are just different ways to do the same thing now we are having another keyword that is known as super keyword 
so for example if you want to call the init function of your super class so you can either write the class name that is person or if you don't want to write the person or let's say you don't remember the person you don't remember the name of your parent class you are having big code so in that case if you don't remember of or if you don't bother to check the name of your parent class what you can do here you can simply write super keyword so whenever you will write super with the help of parenthesis so this is actually super keyword and then dot you can access any function of the parent class what it will do when as soon as you are writing this super function it will automatically make the child class inherit all the methods and properties from its parent class right so this super keyword is also very important you should know what it is doing so when we are writing super dot init and then self first name and last name what it will do it will call the initial uh, it will call the init function of our parent class so let's run it it will uh, okay let's say what is the problem here super dot init self first name and last name what it is showing Super dot type error. This takes three positional arguments, but four well given. Uh, but we have given. Okay, we need not to pass self. It will automatically take the self. Yes, we will have to pass this to only. Let's run it again. Yes, see, for the Hadra is printed here. Got it. So this is another way to do that. See, this was again one of the difference. It's good that we got the error, so we will you will remember this difference well. So whenever you are writing here, whenever you are writing the actual parent class name, that that means whenever we are writing person dot in it, at that time you have to pass all the three parameters that is self and then the two real parameters that is first name and last name. But instead of writing the whole parent class name if you are using the super keyword you don't need to pass self again because in which it will take self you just have to uh, pass the extra two or three parameters whatever the extra parameters are you have to pass but just remember that with the help of this super keyword whenever you are calling the properties or functions of your super class at that time you don't need to pass self parameter fine simple as that so yes it is also one of the way to do that you can again get the same output with the help of that also so this is just example um in the same way see for example if i want to give any extra parameter so what i can do let's say i can write something like uh, like self dot uh, what 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 favorite color let's say anything this is just one more property i want to give see first name and last name we already have now for example i just want any new parameter let's say favorite color so how i can give its value self dot favorite color equal to uh, let's say purple fine now um, when i want to see what happens here why it is important so first two parameters i am passing from here now let's say i want to pass one more parameter and that parameter i am directly passing inside my child class so how i can access it i can access it in the same way with the help of this object so let's say i want to see that what is the favorite color value so i can print it here like print simply x dot favorite color okay so let's run it so see i am getting favorite color here fine so in this way this is just the example how you can deal with your parent class and child class so i have shown you many different examples different scenarios so you can create your own proper you can give your own properties here you can give your own uh, functions here see whenever we are uh, creating one child class and uh, parent class kind of thing so the child class can inherit or can access all the properties functions and variables of the parent class but it can also have its own parameters its own properties and its own functions also like we have seen that it is inheriting the function but here it can add any property by itself also fine so this is all about parent class and child class in child class you can play along with all the parameters all the functions in its own also and it can have the privilege of accessing all the things of the parent class also so this is all about 
we have almost discussed every possibility of the parent class and the child class with along with the example you can try on your own um, by changing the values by adding one more function by adding some more properties fine the more you practice the more you learn so that's all about inheritance for today's video now we will again meet in the next video of our series with a new topic till then keep practicing keep learning thank you so much